In our last video, we learned about electron configurations and how they describe the distribution of electrons among an atom's orbitals. This distribution directly affects ionization energy, which is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom or ion in its gaseous state. The first ionization energy, or IE1, is the energy needed to remove the most loosely bound electron from a neutral atom. This process can be represented by the equation. X in the gas state goes to X plus in the gas state plus E minus, where X is the atom in the gas phase, X plus is the re resulting cation, and E minus is the removed electron. So for example, I have this helium atom, and see how this affects its electron configuration. After the first electron is removed, more energy is required to remove each subsequent electron because the electron is being removed from an already positively charged ion which is more energetically stable. The second ionization energy, or IE2, is usually higher than the first. So the equation is as follows. Um, X plus in the gas phase goes to X2 plus in the gas phase plus E minus. And this trend continues for successive ionizations until no electrons are left. Electrons in higher energy levels are generally easier to remove because they are farther from the nucleus. This is because they experience a weaker attraction and the inner electrons shield the outer electrons from the nucleus's full positive charge. This reduces the effective nuclear charge or ZF felt by the outermost electrons and again, this makes the outer electrons easier to remove. I will also explain how to calculate ZF in the description. Anyway, the stability of electron configurations also significantly influences ionization energy, producing a range of trends. So for example, atoms with stable electron configurations, such as full or half subshells, can have higher ionization energies. Also, electron configurations that have one electron left in the subshell will have less energy because it's energetically favorable to move down a principal or angular momentum quantum number. And electrons with full principal quantum shell shells have particularly high ionization energy. So for instance, noble gases have complete valence shells, making it very difficult to remove an electron. So these trends in ionization energy can be observed across periods and down groups in the periodic table. Ionization energies generally increase across a period from left to right due to increasing ZF and decreasing atomic radius, but it decreases down a group as electrons are added to high energy levels, which are further from the nucleus and more shielded by inner electrons. So let's look at this graph to visualize all of this. We can see magnesium is higher than lithium due to a full S orbital. We see that nitrogen is higher than oxygen due to half shell configuration. We see that beryllium is higher than boron due to boron having one remaining electron in the P orbital. And we see that all the noble gases have higher ionization energy. But overall, we see a trend of increasing ionization energy across a period and then decreasing down a group. So understanding how these ionization energies works allows us to predict and explain the behavior of elements during chemical reactions. It helps us to quantify how matter interacts in a way that reflects the nature of atoms in their orbitals. And that basically concludes the first chapter of this series. And all these foundational concepts will be built upon in future chapters. But for now, I hope these videos provide you with a deeper appreciation for chemistry and the nature of the universe. But anyway, thank you for watching. Until next time.